Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are gonna make a carnivore tortilla. Only one half gram of total carbs each. Now take a look at this tortilla or flatbread. This thing is pliable, it's flexible, and it is totally carnivore. This recipe took me a little bit of time to dial in, and a big part of that was I just couldn't get consistent results. I'd make it once, it would turn out great. I'd make it again, and the batter would either be falling apart or it would get all bubbly on the griddle. It turns out that the issue was timing. This recipe uses gelatin, and if you try making the tortillas too soon, the dough is still too sticky. If you wait too long, the dough starts to get dry and crumbly. So you have sort of a 10 to 15 minute window, which is sort of optimal for cooking these. Now make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna answer some of the things that I think will be the most common questions that you might have as I'm making this recipe. But let me tell you, I have done this now a number of times, repeatedly getting great results. If you do what I do, if you use the ingredients that I use, you should get the same. Now like my recipe for the Paneer Panhead Tortilla 2.0, I strongly recommend either having two skillets like this so you can get an assembly line going or a cast iron griddle. Now if you have both a cast iron griddle and a skillet, you could get three tortillas going at once and potentially double the batch size, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Now since we've got sort of a limited window of time to work with our dough, we want to make sure that our skillets are fully preheated. So we're going to turn those on right now. We'll set the first burner to the low end of medium and the second burner to the medium end of low, just a little bit less than the first burner. Like our carnivore pancakes, one of the main ingredients in this recipe is going to be pork rind crumbs or pig flour. I don't know what we should call it, but it's fairly straightforward. Start with a bag of pork rinds, unflavored. I usually crush them down a little bit initially, then dump them into the food processor and run it until smooth. Be aware that some brands, like Jay's, puts two hot sauce packets inside their pork rind bag. You want to make sure you fish these out. These are not something you want to be running through your food processor. I know this from experience. I transfer my pork rinds to a Ziploc bag, and then I'll throw in a desiccant packet to absorb any moisture. I'll link to those down in the description below. So with that, let's get to making some carnivore tortillas. We're gonna start with paneer, which is a very low moisture, low flavor Indian cheese. I want 70 grams of that. Close. Ha, huh. ah, just overshot. 71, that's still okay. We'll break this up and put it into a small food processor. And then process for about 30 seconds or until it's running smoothly and you don't see any cheese dancing around. Next, we will add 35 grams of our pork rind crumbs, one teaspoon of beef gelatin, which we will sprinkle over the top so it's nice and distributed, and then we will pulse four or five long times until it's all ground up and we don't hear any chunks of pork rind still bouncing around. Optionally, you can add some taco seasoning. I'm gonna add one quarter teaspoon. Just make sure you pay attention to the ingredients on taco seasoning. Oftentimes it'll include maltodextrin. We're gonna pulse this again, probably four or five times real quick. Then we will add one quarter cup or 60 mil of liquid egg white, which will drizzle across the top here. At this point, if you want, you can add some flavor concentrate like cornbread concentrate or tortilla concentrate or acetyl pyrazine. We're not gonna do that though. Process now until our batter or dough starts to climb up the sides and the blade really isn't digging into anything anymore on the bottom. You can see how it's kind of climbed up the sides here around the bowl. We're gonna scrape that down with a spatula, push it towards the center, and then add one tablespoon of very warm water. Process once again until you start to see a ball or cylinder of the dough that spins around the processor bowl here. That's how we know we're done. There it is. 
Then I'm going to spatulize my dough out onto some plastic wrap. I like to fold it up into sort of a cylinder, kind of like sushi in a way. This helps me to portion it out a lot better into equal portions later on. We'll let this sit now for 5 or 10 minutes while the gelatin starts to firm up. We want our skillets to be between 325 and 350 degrees. That's 160 to 175 Celsius. Then I have a 10 inch tortilla press with 10 inch parchment rounds, which I'm going to spray liberally with avocado oil. And then smear this around. I'll lay the top piece of parchment on top so that can get coated. Pat it a little bit. And give the bottom one one last rub just to make sure it's well spread. This is crucial to keep our dough from sticking. I'm going to cut off a third of the dough, roll it between my hands, and flatten it out just ever so slightly so it's kind of like a thick cookie. I'll lay on my top piece of parchment and I will press this down very gently. It doesn't take much to get a six inch tortilla. Let's move this off to the skillet. I transfer it to my hand and then to the skillet. You do not want to transfer it with the paper. What tends to happen then is the paper sticks and by the time that you're able to peel it off you're going to get a bunch of little steam pockets and little holes that go all the way through the dough. After about three minutes we can take a look. Usually three to four minutes is what it takes per side. We'll give this one about another 30 seconds. Then we'll loosen it with our spatula and transfer it from skillet one to skillet two. Then we'll get our second tortilla peeling off the paper Nice and gently, remember, oil that paper. On to skillet one. And then here's our assembly line. Tortilla one to a cooling rack. Tortilla two from skillet one to skillet two. And our third tortilla off the paper and onto the skillet. When they're done, I like to transfer the tortillas while they're still warm to some plastic wrap, which I'll fold up. This helps steam them a little bit and makes them nice and soft and pliable. All right, let's prep one up. Hmm, which looks better? Inside? Outside? We'll do it like this. Throw it on a little dab of sour cream. A little taco beef. Sprinkle a little queso fresco and a little splash of hot sauce. Mm. The texture on this is just perfect. It doesn't fall apart, nice and pliable, so good. So let's talk real quick about what can go wrong with this recipe and potential questions that you may have. First off, it is very important that you get the timing down on this recipe. And once you have it down, you'll be able to replicate this time and time again. First off, the dough needs to sit for about five to 10 minutes. You'll kind of be able to tell if you tried it five minutes and you press a tortilla and it falls apart on your hand, fold it back up, let it sit for another five minutes. Once the dough has hit that ideal state, you've got about a 15 minute window to work in. And as a result, you're only gonna be able to do about three tortillas unless you've got a really big surface area, like a griddle and a skillet. And then you could do three at a time and you could double the batch using a larger food processor. It's also very important that you oil the parchment paper well before every tortilla. If the parchment sticks to the tortilla, that's another way that it sort of starts to tear apart. So oil well and don't press the tortillas too thin. You ought to get three tortillas that are about six inches in size. In terms of substitutions, this is where things get a little bit risky. You might be able to use Knox gelatin in place of beef gelatin. From what I heard from people that did my carnivore pancakes, that seemed to work for the most part, although they got a little bit more spread, some of them said, on their pancakes. So you may be able to do that. In terms of the cheese, you need a very low moisture cheese like paneer. I've tried using queso fresco and it works, but the batter becomes a little bit more delicate. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this when I put it up to the screen, but you get tiny little holes in it as it's cooking. 
don't know if you can see any of those tiny little holes, but I've had some batches that came out almost looking a little bit lacy in terms of the tortilla. And uh, yeah, I can see through some of these holes. You would definitely have taco juice coming through some of these holes. But if you're doing something like enchiladas, not really a big deal. You may be wondering if you can use this tortilla recipe to make chips. Here's one with some guacamole on it. But what about hard shell tacos, you may be asking. Ta-da! Yes, it can be done. Now I'm still playing around with time and temperature and cooking methods on both the tortilla chips and the hard shell taco, but I suspect I'll have a video for you on that next week. As always, I will link to the ingredients and the equipment that I use down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button and then hit the bell and turn on all notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what memberships and perks are all about. Thanks for watching.